Hi, welcome to Standard Chartered uh, TV. Uh, my name is Stephen Green. I'm the head of China Research uh, based in Shanghai. I'd like to spend a couple of minutes talking about China's consumer. Uh, what we've seen in the last few months is pretty positive. Chinese consumers are back buying houses, buying cars, and a ton of other stuff, uh, which is, of course, very different from what we're seeing with the US and European consumers uh, in the last few months. Chinese consumers have savings, they're not so worried about losing their job, and their house price seems to be stable. Uh, and of course, those things are all terribly important for the short term consumer momentum in China. But what I'd like to talk about is more structural, uh, and that's a big word, but I want to talk about how we get consumers spending money over the next few years. Uh, and that, we believe, requires some policy changes. If you look at the Chinese consumer or the Chinese household, they don't actually save that much more than any other Asian household. It's about 30% of their income goes into the bank as savings. So it's not an extraordinarily high savings number. So when we talk about encouraging consumption in China, what we shouldn't be talking about is trying to lower the savings rate, because that savings rate is not a problem. What we need to be talking about is raising incomes. If you raise incomes, that is really, we believe, the key to promoting consumption, household consumption going forward. So how do you raise incomes? Well, there are a number of ideas that we have. One is we can fund, better fund, uh, the health and education systems. Over the last two to three years, we've seen significant amounts of money going into healthcare insurance and also education as well. If you're a kid, in most parts of China today, you can now have nine years of free education. And if you're living anywhere in China as well, you are probably now part of a health insurance system. However, those funding, although it's increased, is not yet enough, we believe. So if you live in rural China, where the majority of China's population still lives, if you go to the hospital and have a serious operation, you're probably still going to only going to get 10 or 20 percent back on the cost of that operation. So it can be a really debilitating high cost for you. So what we believe, we need to spend more money funding the health insurance system. How do we do that? Well, we believe that state-owned industries, state-owned enterprises in China, uh, and there are many, very many big famous firms, at the moment they're only giving 5 or 10% of their profits to the Ministry of Finance to use in the budget. The rest of their profits remain on their balance sheets and they use it uh, for investment purposes. What we believe would be a good thing to do is to ask them to pay a little bit more over to the Ministry of Finance and use that money to fund health and education spending. These enterprises, after all, are owned by people. They're owned by the people of China. So we believe that more of their profits should go back, paid as dividends to the people of China. If we can do that, if we can take corporate profits and fund education and health more securely, we will raise household incomes. And once households in China see those incomes rise, and they have a greater assurance that their future health and education costs will be taken care of, then we believe they will lower that savings rate, spend more, and that we can have more sustainable, strong consumption growth. And if we get that, then the whole China growth model changes, changes towards being a more consumer-based society, and therefore changes to be a more sustainable, stable growth economy.